Hello, everyone. Welcome back to a cup of English. The title of today's podcast is English medical language, blood pressure, and appendicitis. For all of you nurses, nurses assistants, doctors, and anyone else who is interested in or involved in the medical profession. This podcast is for you. A subscriber to my YouTube channel, Maria, recently asked me to go over the nursing reading and practice that she needs as a nurse. As my job is actually medical interpreting, I'm familiar with a lot of medical language. So today I'll start with some essential medical basics. So the following is a conversation between a nurse, the doctor, and the patient. Afterwards, I will repeat the essential medical terms, and then we will listen to the dialogue a second time. Hello, Mr. Smith. What brings you to the clinic today? Well, I feel terrible. Can you describe how you feel? I feel weak and hot and shaky. Let me take your vital signs: temperature, blood pressure, height, and weight. Could you take your shoes off and stand on the scale, please? Okay, a hundred and ninety-two pounds. Now I will measure your height. Okay, six foot two. I need you to sit down with your feet flat on the floor. Please don't move, and stay quiet, so I can get your blood pressure. It's a little high, a hundred and twenty-nine systolic, over seventy-five diastolic. What does that mean? I'm glad you asked. The systolic blood pressure is the pressure inside your blood vessels when your heart beats. The second number, diastolic, is the pressure in your blood vessels when your heart rests. Now this thermometer runs over your forehead. It's digital. Yes, it looks like you have a temperature, a hundred and four degrees. Do you know how long you have had it? Two days. I measured it myself. Do you have any pain? Yes, right in the middle of my stomach. Have you recently had an accident, broken anything, or cut yourself? No, I don't have any cuts or broken bones. Can you show me exactly where it hurts? Right around my belly button, and then it seems to spread out to the rest of my abdomen. What kind of pain is it? Sharp, dull, pressure, an ache? It's sharp pain now, like a stabbing pain. When it started, it was just an ache, like a headache, but now it's a lot worse, and the pain comes more often and lasts longer. It comes in waves. Okay, Mr. Smith, I have put the details in the computer, and Dr. Mojan will be in to see you shortly. Thank you. Hello, Mr. Smith. I am Doctor Mojan. I hear that you have a lot of abdominal pain and a fever. Yes, that's right. If you could please lie down on the bed, I will examine you. I'm going to press gently on your abdomen. Tell me if you experience any pain. Ow! Yes, that really hurts. Please don't press any more. It's just getting worse. Okay, I'm sorry about that. 
Have you vomited at all? Yes, twice today, yesterday and the day before. You appear to have an infection. I suspect it is appendicitis, but it could be something else. To make an accurate diagnosis, I need to see the condition of your internal organs. So today you will have several tests. First of all, a urinalysis. You will give a urine sample and we will see if you have a urinary tract infection. You'll also have a blood test to see if you have elevated levels of white blood cells. This will show if there is definitely an infection. Then because of your pain and vomiting, I believe you need to have an abdominal ultrasound. It's perfectly safe. It uses painless sound waves to produce a picture of your organs. So will I need an operation? We will know when we get the results back. Hopefully you only need to take antibiotics to get rid of the infection. Nurse Winters will come in now and take you to the bathroom to get your urine sample. Then she will take you to get your blood test. In the meantime, I will order and organize your ultrasound. Thank you, Dr. Mojan. I'm glad you didn't wait any longer before coming in. And here are the medical notes. First of all, the types of pain. Well, doctors and nurses usually want us to describe the type of pain we're having. There is sharp pain, like a knife, dull pain, which is a bit distant. It's not sharp. It kind of radiates. There's pressure, ache or achy we say, similar to a headache, stomach ache, etc. Throbbing pain, to throb. It means the pain comes in waves or in a rhythm. Constant pain, obviously it's always there, and spreading when it travels to different parts of the body. Then there are some different sensations. One is tingling, to tingle or tingling. We also call this pins and needles. It's almost ticklish. In Spanish, it's hormigueo, as if ants are running up and down your skin. It feels very much on the surface. And then kind of the opposite of that is numbness numbness with a silent B, when you don't feel anything, when you really can barely feel that area of the body. Shakiness, obviously, when you shake or tremble. You might feel weak. Dizzy, like you might fall over. Exhausted, you have no energy. Nauseated, you feel like vomiting. Sweaty. Obviously, you feel hot. You're sweating. It might be a, a cool sweat even. And chilled. You feel as though you cannot get warm. And the blood pressure. You have the systolic blood pressure. That's the first number of the pressure in the blood vessels when your heart beats and then the diastolic, which is when your heart doesn't beat, when it's resting. To get the blood pressure, the nurse will use a stethoscope, a stethoscope which goes in her ears, and then the pad goes on a pulse area. 
And then the inflatable bag that goes around your arm and sometimes your leg is called an inflatable cuff. A cuff is like the end of your shirt around your wrist. So it's called an inflatable cuff. And then the vocabulary with temperature. Of course, we have thermometer. And the thermometer can be a digital thermometer. Fever, which means the same as temperature. People often say, I'm burning up especially here in the US. I feel hot, I'm burning up. And we use the word degrees. Now talking about Mr. Smith's abdomen, we have obviously the word abdomen and abdominal. Abdominal meaning of the abdomen. Exam, vomit, infection, diagnosis, and remember diagnosis is one, diagnoses are more than one. In this case it's diagnosis, internal organs, internal organs. And then Mr. Smith had to give a sample a sample of urine and a sample of blood in his blood test. You can also give a sample of saliva. And as far as the testing, the blood test was going to show if he had elevated, meaning high, elevated levels of white blood cells the cells that form to attack an infection, the white blood cells. And his tests were going to be an ultrasound, ultrasound using sound waves, a urinalysis, urinalysis, which is quite a common test. And the doctor mentioned his urinary tract urinary tract, which is his whole area where the urine flows. And finally, two of the verbs that we use are to give a sample, to give a sample, but we usually say to get a blood test. You would say, today I got a blood test, or you need to get a blood test. You can say you need to give blood, but give blood usually means you are donating it to a blood bank. So to get a blood test. Now let's hear the dialogue one more time. Hello, Mr. Smith. What brings you to the clinic today? Well, I feel terrible. Can you describe how you feel? I feel weak and hot and shaky. Let me take your vital signs. Temperature, blood pressure, height and weight. Could you take your shoes off and stand on the scale, please? OK, 192 pounds. Now I will measure your height. OK, six foot two. I need you to sit down with your feet flat on the floor. Please don't move and stay quiet so I can get your blood pressure. It's a little high, 129 systolic over 75 diastolic. What does that mean? I'm glad you asked. The systolic blood pressure is the pressure inside your blood vessels when your heart beats. The second number, diastolic, 
is the pressure in your blood vessels when your heart rests. Now, this thermometer runs over your forehead. It's digital. Yes, it looks like you have a temperature, 104 degrees. Do you know how long you have had it? Two days. I measured it myself. Do you have any pain? Yes, right in the middle of my stomach. Have you recently had an accident? Broken anything or cut yourself? No, I don't have any cuts or broken bones. Can you show me exactly where it hurts? Right around my belly button. And then it seems to spread out to the rest of my abdomen. What kind of pain is it? Sharp? Dull? Pressure? An ache? It's sharp pain now, like a stabbing pain. When it started, it was just an ache, like a headache. But now it's a lot worse, and the pain comes more often and lasts longer. It comes in waves. OK, Mr Smith. I have put the details in the computer and Dr Mojan will be in to see you shortly. Thank you. Hello, Mr Smith. I am Dr Mojan. I hear that you have a lot of abdominal pain and a fever. Yes, that's right. If you could please lie down on the bed, I will examine you. I'm going to press gently on your abdomen. Tell me if you experience any pain. Ow! Yes, that really hurts. Please don't press any more. It's just getting worse. OK, I'm sorry about that. Have you vomited at all? Yes, twice today, yesterday and the day before. You appear to have an infection. I suspect it is appendicitis, but it could be something else. To make an accurate diagnosis, I need to see the condition of your internal organs. So today you will have several tests. First of all, a urinalysis. You will give a urine sample and we will see if you have a urinary tract infection. You'll also have a blood test to see if you have elevated levels of white blood cells. This will show if there is definitely an infection. Then because of your pain and vomiting, I believe you need to have an abdominal ultrasound. It's perfectly safe it uses painless sound waves to produce a picture of your organs. So will I need an operation? We will know when we get the results back. Hopefully you only need to take antibiotics to get rid of the infection. Nurse Winters will come in now and take you to the bathroom to get your urine sample. Then she will take you to get your blood test. In the meantime, I will order and organise your ultrasound. Thank you, Dr Mojan. I'm glad you didn't wait any longer before coming in. <laughs>